This is your favorite TV talk show host, Charlene C. Thomas, inviting you to watch Take Up Thy Sword, Testimonies of Triumph, every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Jericho Broadcast Network. You can find us online at myjbn.com or on YouTube and Facebook. Each week, you will hear inspiring stories of how ordinary people overcame extraordinary circumstances by the grace of God. It's like a reality show for Christians. So tune in to watch our journey as we bring you hope for your own trials and adversity on Take Up Thy Sword, Testimonies of Triumph. Hello, this is Charlene Thomas broadcasting live from the <laughs> Juneteenth Family Festival in Daytona Beach, Florida with the tour yeah. that Angie B presents. We are live, Take Up Thy Sword, Testimonies of Triumph. And today we have Miss Leslie, the fabulous, I have to say the fabulous, Miss Leslie with us today. How are you, Miss Leslie? I'm good, how are you? I am good. Please tell us about yourself. Well, I'm 23 years old, or I'll be 23 this Thursday. Oh, happy birthday! <laughs> um, what do you really want to know? Everything! Are you in school? Are you working? Where are um, you from? I'm from Louisiana. Florida. Oh, wow! I was pretty much raised here, and then we moved to Florida. Um, I went to, obviously I graduated high school, then I went to college for cosmetology. Oh, wow! So I picked up my makeup um, from there, and makeup artist now. So okay! Just working on that, and then I also have a certificate in child care. Okay, great, great. Okay, well now you know this show is about testimonies. Yes. So <laughs> you're in this seat because you have a testimony. Yes. So what would you like to tell our viewers today? Well, um... I wasn't um, born or raised in church. Um, my family, they don't really have the Christian life and all that, but um, we were raised in a very bad part of Louisiana, and we dealt with a lot of trials and tribulations in our lives and different things that I had went through. And um, when I moved to Florida, I want to say when I turned, went to high school, I actually gave my, a lot, my life to the Lord my sophomore year of high school at Trinity. Since then, it's been hard, and I've had a lot of things in my past that I had to overcome that I didn't even realize that affected my life now, and it, it was hard to deal with, but I made it through, as always, and I put my trust in the Lord, and He just has been opening up doors for me and revealing things to me, and um, I have a church family now, and I'm just, I'm very heavily involved with church now. It keeps me out of the streets and doing the, you know, the life of a 23-year-old would normally do. Okay, now you said that you gave your life to Christ when you were in high school. Yes, so were you raised in the church at all? No, okay. I wasn't. Um, my mom, she didn't really believe in God growing up. We weren't really taught. My godmother did know God, and she brought us to her church, but, um, she wasn't really, a, I guess, in a way, a good example because she was kind of the person that went to church but then didn't live the life at home. Okay. So, um, growing up, we we knew about church, obviously. We knew about Jesus. And then I remember when we moved to Florida, my mom got us involved with the um, kids' church. And the only reason we went is because they played these amazingly fun games on the bus <laughs> on the Lake Church. Wow. We had, like, pickle eating contests and frozen <laughs> t-shirts and all the different things. Wow. And, but I'm grateful for that because I, me personally, I believe if I was raised in church and I was, I wouldn't be the person I am now. And okay. I wouldn't have the love I have for God now and serve God the way I used to, or the way I do now. And like, cause in my life, um, I was sexually molested. I um, dealt with a lot of self identity issues. I dealt with a lot of um, feeling alone because my mom was always working or this place. You know, I felt like no one believed me going through the situations I went through. And then I was diagnosed with um, bipolar. I was also diagnosed with PTSD because I, my uncle actually passed away when I was a little girl and he was shot and killed in front of my face. Oh, wow. So, um, growing up, I had to deal with all of that. And then having my father not be in my life after everything that happened, um, like having him in and out of my life it kind of made me not trust guys. It made me emotionally okay. unstable. Uh -huh. So it just, 
all of that, I wouldn't change it because I remember people would ask me, like, you know, you've been through all that, but if you had a chance, would you change it? Or um, how can God love you? How can God love someone and let them go through that? But I truly believe if I wouldn't have went through that, I wouldn't be able to touch so many people I have today okay. and change the lives I have. Like, I've come in encounter with so many young girls that deal with these issues. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't deal with that, how would I be able to speak to them? You know, how would I be able to tell them I feel your pain? Exactly. Because they're going to be like, okay, well, you didn't go through that. Right. I went through it, so I know that pain. And it's taken me a long time to kind of voice it and tell people about my testimony and the things I went through. But since I've done it, God's just opened my, opened my life to so much more and opened my eyes to so many people around me that I didn't even know dealt with these things. Wow. So, and you just put me in, um, interact and encounter with a lot of people that can help me, build me up, and strengthen me, and you know, my time to weakness. Because everyone thinks about those hard times they've been through. Right. And sometimes it gets you down. And I, I, I also deal with depression. Okay. So sometimes there are days that I literally don't get out of bed. I will literally wake up and just be so just sad and just so, wow. up, and it literally just comes out of nowhere. And those are the days and I'll just, I'll text a really good friend of mine and they're just kind of encouraging me through the day. And even if I just stay in bed, something someone told me, as long as you're breathing, you're doing what God needs you to do. Amen. You know, Amen. so take it every step by step. Okay, so tell us how you first encountered God. I mean, because everything that happened in your life, did that push you towards God or were you, uh, because you didn't, you, you yes. weren't raised in the church, so you didn't have God, did you feel like, okay, if, if there is a God, why did he let me go through this? Or were you like, I've gone through all these horrible things, I need God. So what, how, tell us about that encounter with God, how you came to be saved. Actually, um, I grew up in a way hating God. I felt wow. like it was him to blame for the things I went through and for the reason no one believed me. Because um, the things I went through, it wasn't like a one-time thing. It was a constant thing, you know. Uh -huh. I remember as a little girl, there were days where, like, I would pray for it to end, and it didn't. And I was just like, you know, if there is a God, then why does he, you know, allow me to do this? Why does he allow me to go through this for so long? You know, and in high school, I remember they made us go to chapel. And it was my worst time ever. I used to fight wow. with it all the time. And I remember people just like, just go. You don't have to do anything. And I just hated being in church. I hated the feel of it because I felt like he had let me down. Okay. And then um, it was actually on a Wednesday chapel service. Um, they had a speaker, and I'll never forget him. His name was Alan Griffin. And he had came. His, he's an evangelist, evangelist. And he had came and he had spoke at the church. And he had gave a really great sermon, but I honestly tell you the truth, I didn't pay attention to any of it. And I was in the back and I remember I had gotten in trouble because I had fell asleep. What? <laughs> well, I mean, you're the only person. I've never heard anybody say that they fell asleep in church. That's just ridiculous. Go on. So, because of that, I had to sit next to a teacher. And every time I fell asleep, she would nudge me and nudge me. And I was obviously aggravated. And then at the end, he had made this little fire on stage. And that's what caught my attention. And they had passed out these little note cards. And he said, on this note card, write the things that anger you. Write the things that bring you down. Write the things that you've been through that no one else will understand. And, you know, and when you throw it in the fire, you're releasing it to God. Wow. And I remember I said, you know, this is a joke. Like, all these people just writing down all this information, flying. And I just felt like it was kind of like more everybody was just staging this or whatever. Wow. And he was like, you know, you write this down. And then when you're ready, you go throw it in the fire. And I remember sitting there, and the teacher told me, well, you're not leaving, so you at least write something down. And I remember I was like, okay, well, I was very defiant. So I was like, I'm not writing anything down, so I guess I'll be here all day. So sure enough, everyone in the shop was gone, even the teacher left. Wow. And I was sitting there, and I had this note card, and I was like, you know what? I don't want to be here anymore. I'd rather just go hang out with my friends. So I wrote, I, I remember writing my dad's name down, and a lot of other things that I went through, forgiveness that I needed and stuff. But in that in that time, I still didn't feel it in a way. It was just like, oh, I'm just writing this to get out of here. And then as I went to get up, it was like something was pushing me down. And as I sat there, I began to cry. And it was just like very slow tears and like kind of thing. I'm trying to like pull myself together. And then the guy, he walks up to me and he tells me, he says, um, the things that are going, that you're going through from your past are only holding you back. Wow. And then he said a quote, and I'll never forget this quote. I've kept this quote since that day. And it said, forgiveness is about setting a prisoner free only to realize the prisoner is yourself. Wow. And he told me, he said, there have been people that have hurt you in your life. There have been people that didn't believe you. 
but you have to let that go if you want a breakthrough. And he's like, you can't blame God for that because the whole time he was there with his arms wide open and wow. he allows you to go through those things for a reason and you have to believe that. And he was like, I'm just going to let you go. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick commercial break and I want you to pick up exactly where you are. We'll be right back. You want to learn how to pray effectively? Discover for yourself a strategy for establishing the promises of God in your life. Charlene C. Thomas is a published author, inspirational speaker, and professional editor. But above all, she is a trained intercessor. As the founder of Sword of the Spirit Ministries, Charlene has created Take Up Thy Sword a monthly newsletter with hope and encouragement from the Bible. This newsletter led to the devotional and journals entitled Prayer Plus Encouragement Equals Power. In 2013, Charlene was named Author of the Year at the Orlando Newsom Awards and she has written three books thus far in an ongoing series of prayer guides. Her newest release, I See What You're Saying, follows When Heaven Hears Your Prayer, and how great is your faith. You can find all of these anointed products and much more at TakeUpThySword.com and other online retailers such as Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Books A Million. If you need help with resumes, proofreading, or book publishing, these services are also available via Spirit of Excellence Writing and Editing. Contact Charlene directly at 321-209-2309 with any questions or comments. That's 321-209-2309. Remember, God heard your prayer. Now you need to learn how to get the answer. Hey, Bertie. Hey, how are you going? Yeah, it's on. All it's right. On. <laughs> what do you want to tell us, dear? Hey, uh, hopefully everybody that can hear my voice will come January 22nd to mm -hmm. 24th mm -hmm. to God, Me and You workshop. Oh. I'm going to be at Seashells on the Beachside, world's most famous beach. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, me and my wife, lovely Angie B. Oh. Uh, if you have any marital problems, Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to tell our testimony of how we got together mm -hmm. with God's love. Because I didn't like you, you didn't like me. Right, but we're <laughs> not going to tell everything right now. Not right now. So hopefully we'll see you there. Uh, make sure you uh, get your reservations in now. Mm -hmm. The sooner the better. Mm -hmm. And uh, hope to see you there. Thank you, honey. That's right. I 
loaded the um, card and I just held it in my hand. I just began to cry. And I said, God, if you're real, just take it away. And I remember I just sat there and I was just like, I don't feel anything. Like people say how they feel numb, you know, they don't feel anything. Because, and that's what I felt. I really was at a point in my life where I felt nothing. Wow. Nothing affected me, nothing hurt me. It was just there. So I grabbed it and I, was, I went up there and I was so, I remember I was shaking and I, I stood up and I was so afraid. But then after I took that first walk, the guy actually came to me and he held my hand and he walked me up the rest of the Wow. And then when I got, got to the um, altar, it had the little fire pit. And I remember I couldn't even throw it in. I just fell to my knees. I just started crying and weeping. And I remember telling God I'm sorry. And I didn't know why I was wow. saying it. Wow. You me. were telling God that yeah. you were sorry yeah. after all that you have been through yeah. and even blaming God at first yeah. for what you have been through. And now you're saying, I'm sorry. What did you feel that you were sorry for? I felt that I was sorry because in a way, because I blamed him, I ran away from him. Okay. And I feel like that's why I dealt with so much anger and so much pain is because I didn't try to get away from it because I blamed him. And at that moment, a part of me realized it wasn't his fault. A part right. of me realized it was, it was obviously the choices of people, but it was also my fault because I ran away from him. Because I hated him. Because I spit on his name. Wow. And I remember I, I was just so sorry. You know, I was just like, I'm so sorry. And I remember I didn't pray for like healing or forgiveness. Or anything. I just remember saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the guy, he comes up to me, he runs right back and he says, you know, it's not about being sorry. God's here. He's with you. And he wants to embrace you and give you a hug. And he said, he wants to give you the love you never felt. Wow. And I remember when he said that, he grabbed me, he picked me up, and then he hugged me. And I've had a lot of people in my life give me hugs and stuff like that. But his hug, it felt like so comforting and so, like, what I needed my whole entire life. Right. And I remember I just cried. I mean, I might have cried for, like, 30 minutes. Wow. And then he said, you don't have to do it alone. We'll do it together. And he threw my paper in the fire. Oh and that was the start of my forgiveness and my walk with God and just everything. And I've been through a lot of trials and tribulations. And times I felt like I did. There were times I did give up. Um, I dealt with a lot of self-harm in the, in the process of this. But because of all that, it made me the person I am. And I'm a lot stronger because of that. And I've had fallbacks. I've had times where I felt like nothing, I'm hopeless and right. stuff like that. But I realized that with God, I'm never hopeless. With God, I never have to feel that way again. Because he gives me the love that I've so long for. Amen. That's it. I can testify myself about feeling unloved. My whole life, I felt like I was unloved. And I had a mother, father, sister, but I always felt alone like I was just an outsider I was a black sheep of the family and I literally cried myself to sleep sometimes especially when I was in my 20s dating different guys and I'm like okay why am I so unlovable you know every guy wants to sleep with me but nobody wants to be with me they don't want to be my boyfriend they don't want to be my husband they just want to you know what I mean and uh, when I completely gave my life to God because I was at church every Sunday still feeling unloved because I didn't have the word of God and when I finally got the word of God, I was 30 years old, and I'm in the prayer room, and I'm reading the word, and I'm like, wait a minute, God is love? Wait a minute, and I knew Jesus died for me, but when you read it in black and white, and you know, you're reading, and it's like, okay, and people are telling you if you were the only person on the, the planet, that Jesus still would have died, and then you look at what he went through, he didn't just, okay, I'm dead. He got whipped and, and thorns and, 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 and beard ripped out his eyes. I'm trying to imagine all these horrific things happening to Jesus for me. And I know I've said, oh, I'm sorry, God, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to go, you know, for you to go through all that just because of my sin. But uh, that, that love of God and Christ, and I've had those hugs where somebody just goes, oh, let me give you a hug, and you just burst out in tears. Something just breaks. I've had that, 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 that mother of the church just hug me, and it's exactly what I needed, that hug from a mother, that hug that, that felt like it's Jesus and God, Abba Father, hugging you. But um, And I remember when I was depressed and mad and sad, my uh, coping mechanism, my healing process was to go down to, you know, ABC Liquor and get a bottle of Crucian rum or something. And I always had liquor in the house, and that's what I did. I tried to drink my sorrows away, and I heard you mention self-harm. So what what did you do to harm yourself during this time? Well, um, I had got involved with cutting myself at first. Wow. At first, it was just a simple.
simple thing like, oh, let me try this kind of thing. Because okay. I heard a lot of people talk about it, a lot of people that dealt with it. And then it really quickly became like the source of which everything relied on. Like wow. I would wake up in the morning and that's how it would start my day. Wow. When I got home, that's what I was doing. And I remember the first time my mom found out. It was the scariest day of my life. And um I don't even know how she found out. I remember she called she called me to the living room and she told me to and I always wore a long sleeve. Wow. Long in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's hot. Like yeah. it's hot right now and I'm sweating. That's okay. Go ahead. I was, I asked her, I was like, why? And she was like, I, cause I, I told you to. And I was like, no, I don't want to. Like, what? And she was like, because I told you to. And she was like, if you don't, your brother's gonna pin you down and I'm gonna do it. So when I wrote up my arm, she just began to cry. Wow. And that for me, yes, it was a scary time, but that for me showed that my mom cared. It showed that okay. my mom did love. And so because for so long, I felt like she blocked those emotions out because wow. of everything. Because I wasn't the only one that went through a hard childhood. My brother did and my sister did. You know, wow. I lived through that. So I felt like a part of her turned off those emotions. So seeing her cry, it was like, you do care about me. You do love me. And my brother was telling me, like, you know, I'm your father. I'll be your father. You know, wow. you don't need that. Like, you know, I love you too much to see you go through this. I love you too much to go through that. And it's the same thing you were saying about when you try to imagine God did all that for me. Mm-hmm. You know, when I think about that, it's just like, how can I harm myself when he did the ultimate thing? He did everything that I could have ever, you know, felt. He did twice as much, you know, right. for me. Right. So that's, that was kind of like my big breakthrough with the cutting. And I tried so hard. I mean, um, suicide twice. Wow. And um, the first, the second time I started suicide, I was in my kitchen. And I had went to cut myself. And I remember, I don't know what happened, but I fell to my knees. I started crying. And then I guess I blacked out. Wow. And then I started, um, I like woke up in like a dream kind of thing. And in the dream, it was just Jesus and he was walking up to me and I was calling out to him, but it was like he couldn't hear me. Wow. And then when he got to me, I was trying to cut myself and nothing would come out. And when he got to me, everything that I put on my arm was on his. Wow. And then I woke up and I was just on the ground and I had a knife next to me and my arms were clean. And that to me symbolized that he did all that for me. Amen. And every time I cut myself, I'm cutting him like they did. Wow. You know, and I'm allowing more pain on him. Mm. And that's not fair. You know, so I did I did the drinking, I did the smoking, but none of it ever satisfied me. Right. None of it ever gave me the fulfill that I have now that I follow Christ truly. Amen. Follow him and you can pretend to follow Christ your whole life. You can do it. And a lot of people will believe it. Yep. But there comes a time when you're going through so much that it comes out that you're not. You're not who you truly say you are. Exactly. But when you truly serve Christ, he opens up doors. He gives you that love, the forgiveness, and the it's- of life are raging. Sometimes we have to be broken down so that we can be rebuilt into what we're actually meant to be. When the struggle to climb becomes just too heavy and when God's voice becomes silent in your ear, just hold on because a queen is about to emerge. The new book by the Queen Bee is entitled Last Week I Wanted to Die, published by True Soul Publishing, an umbrella for survivors. The revealing story of suicide, pain, and depression. The Queen Bee, Angie B, has emerged as a business owner, ministry leader, and a faithful child of God. This story is just the beginning. Last week I wanted to die. On sale now at the I'm Queen B. I'm a bubbly Dot. happy person. I wasn't always that way. Uh, I was not, and I write poems. That's another way I relieve myself that I switch from praise. And one of my poems that says, I wish you knew who I was because you wouldn't believe the person I am now. Wow. And it's true. Like the person that God has made me today, the person that God has always had me to be that I stepped into has been amazing. He's used me in amazing things. I've been on mission trips where wow. I've seen demons literally casting out of people. Wow. I've been to youth events and stuff where I've given my life to God, where God restored my laughter. God has just given me so much of my life. And all I want to do is just give that back to him. Amen. Amen. And now, you know, the name of this show is Take Up Thy Sword because the sword of the spirit is the word of God. And like I said, I was at church Monday through, you know, Sunday, every Sunday I was at church. I was
was raised Catholic, so I had a religion, but I didn't have that relationship. So I thought I was saved, I thought I was okay, and I thought I was going to heaven, but until I got in the Word. So tell me some of your favorite scriptures that got you through. I mean, if you're, you know, being delivered from all these different things, tell us something, some scriptures. I actually have one that really I held on to um, for a long time. It's Genesis 50, 20, and it says, um, for what was meant to harm me can't harm me in the end. Wow. And that, for my life, it speaks wonder to me because through everything I went my life, the devil tried to harm me. The devil tried to kill me. It's just like, right. It says the devil comes to rob, kill, and destroy. That's what he did to me. Wow. He came to take everything from me, but in the end, I won. And Amen. God won. Amen. And that was a very powerful scripture for me. And then, obviously, a lot of people have the Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you because of it. That, for me, he knows my plans. He knows everything I'm going to go through, and he knows how it's going to come out for his glory. Amen. So that's what I hold on to at the end of the day. First scripture that you mentioned in Genesis was that about Joseph? Yes, yes, because I remember when he said, you know, God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction, and I remember saying, okay, this is the land of my affliction. You know, being being a single mom and and and, and being divorced twice and 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 being unemployed twice. It's like, okay, I'm in the land of my affliction, but I'm, somehow I'm still fruitful. How can you be in the jail? You know, like Joseph was, but now you're one of the leaders in the jail. You're still fruitful, you're still victorious. How can you be a slave and, and, and still be in charge of somebody's house and, and and still just hold on to God and just trust God and you know, it's like especially with Joseph's like, okay God, you you gave me this dream. You told me, you know, my brothers and my parents were gonna bow down to me and now I'm in a pit? Well what just happened here? So I mean if you have some advice, what would you tell young people today? Me personally um, being, going through the life that I went through and the trials and tribulations, one thing I can say is never give up. Because the second you give up, that's saying that God isn't good enough. That's saying wow. that God can't bring you through this. And to hold on to the little hope that you do have, the little, she says if you have faith of a mustard seed, Amen. you can move mouth. That's it. You know, so just hold on to that and never give up. Never think that you're not worthy. Never think that you're not good enough. Thank you.